Hi guys, welcome to Nerdbytes and this is going to be my top 5 PlayStation 3 games. Well, as I've got a PlayStation 4 now and obviously I'll be playing a PS4 a lot more often than I'll be playing the PlayStation 3, I thought I'd uh, go over my top 5 PlayStation 3 games, the ones that I love the most, played the most and I just, I just, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go back to again. In at number 5 is Brutal Legend. Now this game was awesome. It was just a heavy metal man's wet dream. Just epic. Absolutely epic. Came out of absolutely nowhere. Jack Black just decided to put this, this together. It was like a medieval heavy metal land. You're a roadie that you go to save and take a, 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 load of, like, a, a show on the road. Defeat all of different types of genres of music in the form of obviously creatures and stuff. And then it's just, an, it's such an epic game, it really is. Playing as Eddie Riggs, which is obviously the kind of uh, Jack Black character. You've got loads of other characters in it, like Lemmy the Killmaster. You've got Ozzy that does all your updates and everything. You've got Rob Halford that's in it. All these kick-ass characters, this massive open land. You've even got like a heavy metal car. You've even got like weapons as well, in the form of like an axe. that has got loads of different power-ups. You've got um, a guitar as well, which is just loads of different things. Electrocutes people, it's freaking awesome. It's literally exactly what a heavy metal person would want out of a video game really as a, like an open world video game it's just so awesome it really is in at number four is star wars the force unleashed now a lot of people like this a lot of people didn't like this but i love this game and i keep going back to it because it it had been a long time coming us having a brand new star wars game on the playstation 3 that was really really good and this was one of the first Star Wars games where you really tapped into some powers. You know, I mean, your electrocution, your force repulse, your push, your lightsaber throwing, just absolutely everything about it. Just you could use your powers to the absolute max. Just as this Sith apprentice of Darth Vader's, that over time you become a good guy and you you're the catalyst for forming the Rebel Alliance, which is pretty awesome. The way the story goes is from episode, after episode three but before episode four, and just the story was awesome. The characters were kick-ass. As we all know, Star Wars is great anyway and in seeing all these new worlds obviously going to be with Felucia, uh, Raxus Prime where the junkyard that was a pretty cool place to go and the whole story was kick ass and then we had choices at the end as well you could kill the Emperor and then you die and then it's the happy ending or you can kill Vader take his place and then everything's all the bad side and all your friends die and it's after that you get a chance to uh, download these DLCs where it's a what if scenario what if Darth Vader was killed by the apprentice you take his place and then you go to Tatooine and kill Obi-Wan and then you go to uh, Hoth and turn Luke to the dark side just all those little extra bits were kick ass they just they, they really know how to do this storyline and it's just I really enjoyed it it's like it never got boring I've gone back to it many times and I will go back to it many times again in at number three is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I still haven't finished this game. I still haven't finished it. And it's epic. It's just the land is so massive. The characters are awesome. It's so medieval and fantasy based. It's just, there's so much stuff to do. Massive missions, side missions, little mini quests, talking to people, getting drunk, getting married, picking flowers, shit like that. Just loads of different things. You can just do like, everything that you could possibly think of. And it's just an epic advanced land, it's just all the dragons are all free moving as well, which was really a cool idea as well. The words stuck in a certain area, they, they can appear at any point in the game. If you kill another one, another one can pop up, like somewhere you wouldn't expect. And it's just loads of dungeons to clear out, caves to clear out, just the whole land is breathtakingly beautiful. It's such a good graphic system they've put together and it just it really looks awesome. And like I said, I still haven't finished this game yet because you, every time you go on it, you do a bit of the main mission, and then you end up doing a side quest, side missions, bits and bobs here and there, you clear out caves, you do this, you do that. And before you know it, four hours have gone by, and you have only done one of the main missions, and it's just, it never gets boring, and it's just an epic, epic, epic game, it really is. In at number two is Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. This was just, wow, I mean... I didn't mind the Assassin's Creed uh, games, I'd only played the first one before I played this and I thought it was quite cool and uh, me and a friend of mine both agreed that we would always wanted to have a piratey version of this and eventually brought out Black Flag and it just, it delivered everything that we wanted free roaming on your pirate ships, massive pirate ship battles, loads of like fights, really like golden age of piracy area you meet all these awesome characters like Blackbeard, Vane, Rackham, go through the entire story and it's just, 
it's the perfect pirate game, it really is. I haven't played a pirate game before or since that encapsulates this era. And it's just such an awesome game. Obviously all the techniques and everything with your hidden blade and your fighting and everything was awesome. Obviously loads of side missions, loads of stuff to do. The main mission in the storyline was brilliant. Playing Edward Kenway, which obviously ends up being Connor from Assassin's Creed 3's grandfather. Which again, another good thing to tie it all in as well. Just really cannot get over how good this game was. I think I've played it at least four or five times since I've had it. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to go back to it again soon. It never gets boring and it never gets old. In at number one is Red Dead Redemption. This game was so damn epic. It goes down as one of the best games of all time. It is basically GTA in the Old West and it's epic. You play as John Marston, this really kind of awesome, kind of kick-ass cowboy character, this outlaw that had a gang, he ran with them, then they booted him out and then you work with the government to take down all your old um, friends and gang members because if they don't they're going to kill your family and that's how the story unfolds and going through all this massive expansive land it's just so awesome again there's so much to do with this open world scenario obviously loads of side missions loads of main missions well the storylines were awesome the characters as well were just they just really made this era so perfect and they just they had some really good things that go along with it the fact that like the machinery is coming in like trains and cars and and John Marston was really quite a cool character, the way he was just like, well as long as there's government and guns, we're never going to have peace, and just that whole thing flowed through the film. Obviously when you're in America, when you go to Mexico, and you see this whole Mexican revolution as well, just everything about this game, from start to finish, was perfection. Even down to the little mini games where you're doing the five finger fillet, or you're playing dice, or you're playing poker, you can get drunk, all the customization of your outfits and your weapons, absolutely everything was perfect in this game and I played it I think I played it about nine ten times now all the way through even the online stuff I thought was really good fun as well me and my friend used to do it a lot really good fun and even the that DLC they got, you got to download which was the undead nightmare pack which was basically a what if ending of if everybody turned into zombies you had to go out and kill them which made it a lot harder because you had to have the headshots you know I mean all that kind of stuff you get to see the four horsemen of the apocalypse and loads of different mythical creatures and stuff and all this random shit going on it was a really cool kind of quirky little DLC to download on top of this absolutely groundbreaking epically awesome game even the ending as well spoiler alert the ending of John Martin dying was one of my biggest shockers in games really didn't expect it to happen because I thought he's a main character, it's not going to happen and then he gets killed and then you end up being his son for the remainder of your open world time it's just, it's epic just a really good way to end the story and it's just it never gets boring, it's just it's such an epic game and I really hope that they do a follow up soon on the Playstation 4 with the next gen graphics because it would be epic if they do so so that's my top 5 Playstation 3 games I'm pretty sure I'll do a Playstation 4 game review at some point of my top 5 ones but obviously I, it's, I've got to get some time really because I've got to try more games, I've only tried two so far. And obviously I will let you know that a Batman Arkham Knight review is coming, I'm close to finishing the game I think, so as soon as I've finished it I will be reviewing it, so keep a lookout for that. So what did you think about Top 5, what are your Top 5 Playstation 3 games? Let me know down in the comments or send me an email. You can also find me on the various social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and moviepilot.com. Just type in Nerdbytes anywhere and I'm sure you'll find me. And of course, keep it nerdy.